Cote St. Luke is a small but mighty city situated on the island of Montreal. Our city is home to over 32,500 residents and boasts the highest population of seniors per capita in all of Quebec. In the past year and a half, along with the rest of the world, everyone in our city has been affected by the catastrophic global health crisis of COVID-19. We are grateful to our frontline workers, our residents, our dedicated staff and public servants who did their part and faced this tragedy head on. In this series, we'll meet the city directors who had to adapt under almost impossible circumstances and guide us through a crisis that has evolved into the most challenging period of time Cote St. Luke has ever faced. Hello, I'm Mitchell Brownstein, Mayor of Cote St. Luke. It's hard to believe that in January 2020, COVID-19 was not a part of our daily vocabulary. In this first episode, we'll introduce the city directors as we look back on the first days of the pandemic. Can I do a lot of these Jim Halford things where I just look at the camera? <laughs> uh, my name is Daryl Levine. I'm the Director of Public Affairs and Communications for the City of Cote St. Luke. And I've been here since September uh, 2006. My name is Cornelia Diane Ziga, and I'm the Director of the Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Cote St. Luke. I've been Director for about five years. But prior to that, I've always worked in recreation since about the age of 16. My name is Jonathan Schechter, and I am currently the city manager. I'm Andrea Sharon. I work for the city of Cote St. Luke. I'm general counsel, and I've worked here for 15 years. I'm a director of a department who deals with all the purchases for the city. Hi, I'm Beatrice Newman, the Director of Public Works in the City of Cote St. Luke. I have been working with the City in total for almost 14 years. I've been living in Cote St. Luke for practically all my life since I'm a kid. And I'm still living here. I'm still a resident. Hi, I'm Angelo Marino. I'm the Treasurer and Director of Finance and Information Technology. My name is Janine West, and I am the director of the Eleanor London Cote St. Luke Public Library. I have a, a very long history <laughs> with the library, yeah. Yeah, I've been here, next year it'll be 40 years. I'm Nadia Dufuria. I'm the associate city manager here at the city of Cote St. Luke, as well as the director of human resources. My name is Tanya Abramovich. I was, during the length of the pandemic the city manager in Cote St. Luke and now I am the associate city manager urban strategy. Bonjour, je m'appelle Philippe Chateauvert, je suis directeur de la protection civile pour la ville de Cote St. Luc. Je suis responsable de cinq divisions, la gestion des mesures d'urgence, les citoyens patrouilles, la sécurité publique, les premiers répondants médicaux et le centre de répartition. Le mois de février et le mois de janvier sont toujours des périodes très occupées pour un service de premier répondant et un service de sécurité publique par la météo, par notre volume d'appels qui est déjà habituel hors de la pandémie. At Public Works, we were in the midst of uh, snowstorms and uh, weather events. Very, very busy battling the storms of, uh, of the winter. For spring break, I went with my family to New York. And this was end of February. Um, so in retrospect, perhaps not the greatest place to go. I had several um, celebrations with family and friends that I was attending and it had been a while since I, I had seen you know, a lot of family and friends, you get busy in life, but that particular month was a month where I was seeing a lot of them. It was business as usual, come to work, regular work day, work hours, we planned for the whole year so we would have departmental 
meetings once a week saying, okay, what's coming up for council, the capital projects we organized and we just thought it was normal, everything. Systems go, regular. <laughs> I was still in Florida and there was no sign of a pandemic at all in, in Fort Lauderdale or anywhere else in Florida. In February of 2020, I was in Cote St. Luke, we were working and we were pretty aware of what was going on around the world in terms of the virus. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we know. There was a report that in um, Washington state, I think, um, there was a case, they didn't have a, a source for how the person got sick, and the news report didn't explain what that meant. But what that meant was it was out in the wild and it, and, 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 and it would probably spread from there. We heard that something was rolling in that was bigger than us. And um, if something was rolling in like a serious virus or disease, we have to make sure that uh, we'll be able to protect um, our staff and the residents of Cote St. Luke as best as we can. So by, at the end of February, we started hearing enough news to be concerned that uh, a crisis was happening. De mémoire, la première fois que j'ai entendu parler du virus, c'était en décembre 2019, dans des discussions avec notre partenaire Urgence Santé, qui est notre agence de santé responsable pour les soins préhospitaliers. On avait déjà, déjà des, des discussions à ce niveau-là. On est de nature très curieux en gestion des mesures d'urgence. On, on, on se tenait au courant de ce qui se passait en Chine et on en parlait déjà sans très honnêtement comprendre la portée que ça aurait et l'importance de ce que c'est. I knew that there was a virus and when we were hearing uh, stories on the radio, we knew that the virus was something very dangerous, but we didn't necessarily feel it close to home because it wasn't here yet. We're hearing um, enough information that we needed to uh, start getting concerned here at Public Works because we know that in any event, whether it's a crisis or a celebration, Public Works has to be on call. I had to go to a conference in Nashville. And that was really, because now we're talking about the end of February. So things are really, really starting to ramp up. And I remember the whole conference really sitting there like every morning looking at numbers, looking at numbers, you know, in Canada. And um, yeah, like getting very nervous. The flight was nerve wracking, going back was even more nerve wracking. I think Canada was at eight, a total of eight cases. And <laughs> even that, like we were, we were getting nervous. Philip and I, as emergency coordinators, we worked together, right? So we we had been talking about it all week, because um, we do have an emergency preparedness plan. The process is is one that works very well. We regularly meet as a director team, we meet on a weekly basis, we always would meet in person, and it was just to discuss the issues of the week or topics that were upcoming. Well, that week, I mean, we, we were already, in my mind, we were just going to have the meeting and close everything, right? For, for, for me, this was what we were just having the official meeting to do what I thought we were always going to do, right? It wasn't the first emergency meeting we've called up directors for, we've had these for heat waves before. So in my mind, we were just preparing for, okay, how are we going to do this? So I joined that meeting um, by uh, telephone uh, and most of the staff and some of the elected officials were um, in our conference room meeting as we would normally meet for any other thing. And I remember thinking at the time, maybe we shouldn't all, maybe they shouldn't all be there, but we didn't have another way to, to do it. And that particular meeting was a little different. I was remote. I was you know, on the phone trying to follow what was going on. So it was much more difficult than being actually in the room. The directors uh, don't necessarily have uh, a specific expertise in COVID-19 and really that first meeting was identifying the issues, identifying what we can do locally to help. The atmosphere and the aura of the meeting was very different. It, it was dramatic. It was, you know, you were walking into something you knew that um, was not the norm. And so it was alarming on many levels and there was a sense of panic because it was very new and it was very real, it was in Montreal. As the information was coming at us, I'm always very busy taking notes to make sure that I have everything in sequence and so I could take that back to my team of uh, six managers and um, several white collars and 
about 80 blue collars. So I have to make sure that the information that comes back to them is, is pretty specific and uh, as factual as possible. Uh, but of course it was really about getting ready, about shutting down and what we're going to do and when would we shut City Hall down and how would we allow people to work from home. On an HR capacity, uh, we have to prepare a memo uh, to advise staff what's, what's happening, uh, follow all the rules that this nest was trying to uh, give us at very last minute and to advise them that, you know, Nobody's coming into work, everybody is working from home or uh, staying home uh, effective uh, the following Monday, the 16th of March. So everybody's talking about what is going on and, and we get to my turn and so I'm really ready and I'm pretty excited to sort of say uh, this is what we're going to do. And um, Philip, who's <laughs> Director of Public Safety, kind of looks at me kind of like, um, I don't know, I don't know if you're going to be doing that. And I'm sort of taken aback, like, what do you mean? And um, he says, well, you might have to, cl you might be closing the library. And I, and I said, what? That's, that can't be. That can't be. Donc, un, un des, des défis quand on a des décisions difficiles et euh, avec de grandes conséquences à prendre, c'est d'assurer qu'on est capable de convaincre le reste de nos collègues de nous suivre et de les amener à ce niveau-là où nous, ça fait déjà quelques semaines qu'on se préparait au COVID-19 qui allait euh, arriver ici et qui allait avoir un impact qu'on comprenait de plus en plus clair. Donc, d'assurer d'amener ces gens-là avec nous euh, intellectuellement, c'est aussi un groupe qui est très intelligent, qui est capable de comprendre si on, on, on supporte nos actions, nos décisions avec des données. Donc c'était de les convaincre, de leur faire comprendre pourquoi il fallait agir rapidement pour avoir un impact qui allait être mesurable sur la pandémie. And all of a sudden, we hear Montreal has closed the library system. And then we hear like, oh, Dorval's closed. And obviously, we were closing. The library in all its 55 years has not closed for one day, not one holiday. Not one day, we've been open 365 days a year for 55 years. To tell everybody that the library was closed, uh, this was like, this was unheard of. This was unprecedented. We had shut down at that March 12th meeting our own, like we shut down the library, we shut down our, the public facilities you go to. What we didn't initially shut down because it's not ours to shut down our community organizations and so the focus was to try to get the community organizations to shut down. The word lockdown had come into play. That wasn't part of our vocabulary back in, in 2020 so you know they had mentioned that we're going to have to go on lockdown, the schools were going to be locked down and so the facility center and basically we had to tell everybody who was already in the center that day that we had to close up and people had to leave. So there was a very real sense of, of panic at the time because this was just unheard of. Initially the plan is what are we going to do with our facilities and what are we going to do to protect our employees? That's the sort of the priority. Um, and so we, we make decisions very quickly. It's, very, it's an ever-changing uh, environment. Um, but we announce uh, first that the library is going to close and then eventually the city hall will also close too and all the other buildings. The biggest challenge was to try to explain what's going on to the employees, try to reassure them that we're doing everything we can uh, for their safety, because it was mostly the unknown that was difficult to communicate uh, to staff. This is a message from the city of Cote St. Luke. This is a message from the city of Cote St. Luke. Le Premier ministre Legault a annoncé aujourd'hui que tous les événements réunissant 250 personnes ou plus seront interdits afin de contribuer à minimiser la propagation du coronavirus. En vertu de ces décisions, la ville de Côte-Saint-Luc a décidé de fermer la bibliothèque et le centre communautaire aquatique à compter de 18h ce soir, le jeudi 12 mars. Emergency measures are not tailor-made for a particular emergency. And as we realized and as time went on, this was not a punctual emergency such as the ice storm or a flood or a fire or a gas leak or a water main break, but this was uh, a, an emergency that would last for a very, very long time.
Le défi, c'est de prendre des décisions avec l'information incomplète. Euh, dans la vie, comme gestionnaire, on aime se renseigner et obtenir toute l'information nécessaire, autant opérationnelle que financière, toutes les statistiques pour prendre une bonne décision, alors que ce n'est pas le cas en gestion de mesures d'urgence. On ne peut pas attendre de connaître le virus pour prendre des actions. Donc, un des plus grands défis était sans aucun doute de, de, de prendre ces décisions-là rapidement en espérant que c'était les bonnes avec l'information qu'on avait d'avoir le courage de le faire. This is Mayor Mitchell Brownstein with an update on our response to COVID-19. First, I want to stress the importance of following public health rules related to COVID-19. We now know of infected people in our community. Some of these infections are community transmissions arising from attending large gatherings. Last Tuesday, Cote St. Luke declared a state of emergency. We did this in order to give the city the power to require the closure of all non-essential stores. Je crois en les gens de notre ville. Je crois que vous soutiez les uns et les autres et que vous avez que le respect de ces règles assurera la sécurité de nos proches et de nos voisines. Je compte sur vous.